In this class, we will learn the Aftes of Masecha Saita. Our daf can be divided into five parts. Number one, our Gemara will ask two questions on the Brysa from the previous daf and answer them. Number two, our Gemara will present the Brysa regarding the Saita getting Mida Keneged Mida. It'll be a long Brysa that also refers to the Nachash HaKadmini as well as others. Number three, the Gemara will ask and answer a question on the Mishnah. Number four, the Gemara will present a new Mishnah that teaches how Shimshin was punished, Mida Keneged Mida. And number five, the Gemara will present an extended discussion with numerous teachings regarding Shimshin. At the end of the previous daf, in the beginning of this daf, we had a brysa. And in that brysa, one of the things that we learned is the need for three psukim that teach us that a person is punished for every little thing that he does. The first psukim that was presented is, B'sa'asa'a b'shalcha t'rivena, which means, with a precise measure, Hashem will deal with whoever it is that he's punishing. The second psukim is, Kikol sa'in sa'in berash which means every measure is measured with noise. Every little thing is paid attention to. And number three, it says, achas la achas one to another one to find a, a cheshben, an amount that every little thing is added together. And the Bryce over there explained why we needed not just besasa, we also needed kikol sa'in sa'in barash, and also achas la achas limsei But the question then is, why can't we just have achas la achas limsei and not need kikol sa'in sa'in barash? The Gemara asks, since we learned from achas la achas, so why do we need kikol sa'in sa'in barash? And the Gemara answers, lichemido. We need it for the type of punishment. The idea that it's Mida connected mida. Not that, that a, not just that a person's punished for every little thing, but that it, the form of punishment is mida connected mida that we only learn from kikol sa'in sa'in barash, and it's not explained here or in Rashi how that pasuk teaches it to us. The Gemara then proceeds to ask the following: that okay, we explained why we need achas la achas lim seicheshbin, and we need kikol sa'in sa'in barash, but since we learned it from kikol sa'in sa'in barash, why do we need besasa or b'shalcha terivena? And the Gemara answers, we need it We need it for the teaching of Rav Chinnah Bar Papa. Rav Chinnah Bar Papa said, Hashem only punishes a nation when it deserves to be sent away, meaning when it's ready to be destroyed. So Hashem won't punish a nation until it gets to a point where it then deserves to be destroyed. And he brings the Pasuk as it says, that it's a precise measure that he sends it away, meaning that he destroys the nation. The Gemara now proceeds to challenge the teaching of Rav Chinon of our Papa. And the Gemara says, Aini, is this so? That Hashem only punishes a nation when it deserves to be completely destroyed? Va'amar Rava, but Rava said, The three cups that were set in the dream of the butler in Mitzrayim, why were they said? And he explains that these cups refer to punishment. And there were three different times that Mitzrayim was and will be punished. Achas, sheshasas bimei Moshe. One, that it drank, which means the punishment that it received in the days of Moshe. Va'achas bimei pari nechoi. One in the days of pari nechoi. Va'achas and one, sheasido lishtois im achavrasel. One that it will drink in the future with its fellows. So we see that Mitzrayim was not completely destroyed, but rather it received punishments at different points in time. And the Gemara supports its question. And that's why we're going to have here a great box with an arrow pointing upwards because it's supporting the question. The Gemara does so by negating an answer. And the Gemara says, V'chi teima, hanach ozdu, if you're going to say that those are gone, they went, they were destroyed completely, the ones in the days of Moshe, and so to the ones in the days of Paranachai. V'hani yachrinyaninu, and these are a different group of Mitzrim, so the original ones were completely destroyed. The Gemara says you can't say that, V'hatanya, but it was taught in a b'raisa. Amar Rabbi Yehuda, Rabbi Yehuda said, Minyamin Ger HaMitzri was a fellow student of his by Rabbi Akiva and Minyamin Ger HaMitzri said that he 
was a first-generation Mitzri and married a first-generation Mitzris. And he would marry his son in the future to a second-generation Mitzris. And the purpose of all of this was so that his grandson would be able to enter the cow, be able to enter and be able to marry any, any Jewish person from Bnei Yisrael. Because a Mitzri cannot enter the kahal, kahal to marry any Yid until it's a third generation removed from being a Mitzri. Now, if those Mitzrim were completely destroyed, then he wouldn't have this issue. So clearly we see that they weren't completely destroyed. So how do we understand the teaching of Rav Chinon Bar Papa? And the Gemara answers, itmar hachi itmar. Rather, if it was taught, this teaching of Rav Chinon Bar Papa, this is what he said. He said, Hashem only punishes a king when he deserves to be sent away to be destroyed. And then he says, Shenemar, as it says, B'sa'asa b'shalcha. So it's only a king specifically that Hashem waits to punish him until he deserves to be destroyed. The Gemara now proceeds to present a sort of footnote on what was said previously. We mentioned the teaching of Rav Chinon Bar Papa. So it says the Gemara, Amemer Masni Laho, the Rav Chinon Bar Papa, Aho. Amemer taught the teaching of Rav Chinon Bar Papa on the following Pasuk. He said, My Dixiv, what's this that's written? Ki ani Hashem loishinisi, va'atem bnei Yaakov loichalisim. The way it's translated is, I Hashem have not changed, and you, the sons of Yaakov, have not perished. So the way Amemar presented the teach, teaching of Rav Chinon of our Papa on this Pasuk is as follows. He explained, what does it mean, Ani Hashem Leishanisi? What it means is, I Hashem, Lehikesi lo Uma Vishanisi lo. I did not strike a nation and strike them again. Because once Hashem strikes a nation, it's only when they deserve to be completely destroyed. And so he won't strike them again because they're already destroyed. Although the Gemara rejected this explanation, here we're presenting how Amemer taught it on a different Pasuk, in this format, that Hashem waits to strike a nation until He will completely destroy them. And when it says, Va'atem b'nei Yaakov leichlisim, and you, the sons of Yaakov, did not perish, this is related to what it says on a different Pasuk, Chitzai akalebam, I will finish my arrows in them, which seems to say that Hashem will let out all of His punishments on them, the Yidin, on us, so the way it's explained is, my arrows will finish, but not the Yidin, that the Yidin will always remain in existence. The Gemara now proceeds to present a teaching which seems to be connected to our Gemara, because in the answer he said that Hashem waits till a nation deserves to be completely destroyed in order to punish it. Amar Rav Imnuna Rav Imnuna taught, Ein HaKadosh Baruch Hu Nifram in Adam Ad Hashem only punishes a person when his measure has been filled. And what it means over here is Hashem waits till the person has all the pleasures in this world and he waits to punish him till the next world. Shanem, as it says, Bimalois Sifkai, after his desire has been filled, Yetzer Loi, then bad things will happen to him. So first the person fills himself with all the pleasures in this world and Hashem punishes him in the next world. The Gemara now proceeds to present another teaching, which doesn't seem to relate to our discussion. On the surface, it would seem that the way it comes up in our Gemara is because the author is Rav Chinon Bar Papa, who was mentioned earlier. And the Gemara says that Rav Chinon Bar Papa said, Darush Rav Chinon Bar Papa, my dechsev, what's this that's written? Rananu tzadikim ba'ashem la yesharim nova sehilo. So the literal translation is that tzadikim should sing joyfully in Hashem. La to those who are straight and upright, Nova Sihila, it's it's fitting to praise Hashem. So says Rav Chinna Bar Papa, Al Tikri Nova Sihila, Ela Neve Sihila. Don't read it to say Nova Sihila. It is fitting for them to praise Hashem, but rather Neve Sihila, which means a palace of praise, which over here it's interpreted to mean because of their palace, they have reason to praise Hashem. 
and he says this refers to Moshe and David that their enemies didn't benefit from their work and therefore their work which is their palace is a reason to praise Hashem that it was not used by their enemies and he says by David where do we find this it says Tavu that the gates of Ir David they sunk into the earth and so the enemies of David didn't, were unable to benefit from it and by, by Moshe Rabbeinu he says that Omar Mar it was taught Mishenivne Mikdash Rishin that from when the first base of Mikdash was built, Nignaz Oyel Moyed, the Oyel Moyed, the Mishkan, was hidden. And it, in, in, it continues and says, Krushov, Krushov, Ubrichov, Amudov, Vadonov, all the different parts of the Mishkan were hidden together with it. And the enemies of the Bnei Yisrael were unable to benefit from it. The Gemara asks and inquires, Heicha, where was the Mishkan and all of the items of it? Where were they hidden? And the more answer is Amar Rav Chizda, Amar Ravimi, Rav Chizda, Amar Ravimi said, it's Tachas Mechil Shel Heichel. It's under the tunnels of the Beis HaMikdash. The Gemara now proceeds to present the Brisa related to what we learned in the Mishnah of the punishment of the Saita. Tana Rabbanan, the Rabbanan taught in a Brisa. Saita, the Saita, Nasna Inab Misha Inay Ra'ila. She set her eyes on someone who was not fit for her because it wasn't her husband. And therefore, Masha Bikshale Nitanla, Umasha Bayada Nitalua Mimena. What she sought was not given to her, and what she had was taken from her. And the Brisa continues, Shekala Nason Enav. Because anyone who sets his eyes on something that is not his, what he seeks, they do not give him, and what he has, they take away from him. And the Brisa continues to present how we find this in a specific case, and that is by the Nochash Akadmani. The Nochash wanted to marry Chava, and so it says, And we also find this by the Nochash Akadmani. That he set his eyes on something that was not fit for him, which is Chava, the Nochash wanted to marry Chava. And what we find is what he, what he sought, what he wanted, was not given to him. They didn't give it to him. He did not receive Chava. And what he had, they took from him. And the Bryson now shows where we find that what he had, they took from him. Omar Kodesh Baruch Hu. Hashem said, "Ani amarti yehi melech al kol behim of achaya." I said he would be king of all animals. Va'achsha v'now, as it says in the pasuk, "Aru whom he kol behim or whom he kol chayes asada." He is cursed of all animals. Furthermore, "Ani amarti yahalich bekoim askufa." I said that he would walk upright. And achsha and now, like it says in the pasuk, "Al ge al gechayne yelech," he will walk on his belly. Another thing, I said his food will be human food. And now it says in the Pasuk, he will eat dust. And the final things, final one is, this is not an example that what he had was taken from him. He said, I will kill Adam and marry Chava. Now, not only won't he marry Chava, but there'll actually be everlasting hatred, permanent hatred between Chava, between the woman and the snake, like it says in the Pasuk, Eva Ashis ben Cha uben Aisha, I'll place hate between you and the woman, uben Zaracha uben Zara, between your offspring and her offspring. And the Brisa concludes, V'chein Matzinu, we find the same thing by Kayin, Kairach, Bilam, Doyeg, Achitoifel, Gechazi, Avshalom, Adeniyahu, and Uziyo and Haman, we find by them the same exact thing, which is they set their eyes on something that was not fit for them, and therefore what they sought was not given to them, and what they had was taken from them.
the Gemara now proceeds to present a discussion on what the Mishnah taught that by the curse that the Kain administers to the Saita, first her thigh and then her belly is cursed. Because that's how she sinned. She started with her thigh. And the Gemara asks, Where do we know this from? That the curse first addresses the thigh and then her, then her belly, then her stomach. And the Gemara is going to explain its question. If you'll say it's because it's written in the Pasuk, Hashem makes your thigh collapse. It starts with the thigh. And your stomach to swell. If that's where we learn it from, it mentions the thigh before the stomach. The problem is Vahaksiv, but it's written Vitsavsa Bitna Vinafla Yurecha. It's written her stomach will swell and her thigh will collapse. So we see over there that it mentions the stomach before the thigh. And the Gemara presents an answer. Umar Abaya Abaya said, Ki layit, there's two parts. There is the layit, the curse that the Kayan administers, and then there's the actual punishment itself. Ki layit, when he curses or by the curse, there it's first the thigh and then the stomach, because the thigh started with the Avera. However, umaya ki batki, when the waters actually check, when they test, and if she did an Avera, she receives the punishment, so by the punishment, it's done normally. When the water enters the body, first it goes to the stomach, and then the thigh. So that's why we find this difference, that it says, beseis yerechech, and then bitnech, that's referring to the curse. There the Kayin mentions first, the thigh and then the stomach, and then bitna and yerecha, where it mentions bet and the stomach before the thigh, that's referring to the actual waters giving the punishment. The Gemara ever challenges this and says, Also by the curse, it mentions the stomach before the thigh. It says, to swell the stomach, and collapse the thigh. And the Gemara answers, That's only to inform the site that the first her stomach and then thigh will be punished. And the reason this is done is to not cast any type of question Question, questions and doubts about the Mesaita that the Kayan told her first the thigh and then the stomach and the people will see that first it was her stomach and then the thigh. So therefore it's important to inform the Saita that although the curse is starting with the th- her thigh and then her stomach but the actual punishment will first affect her stomach and then her thigh. We now continue on to the next Mishnah, which is the sixth Mishnah in our parak, And the Mishnah continues with the discussion of Midah Keneged Midah. And here we'll talk about it both in regards to punishment as well as reward. And the Mishnah says, Shimshin halach achar enov, lefichach nikru plishtim es enov. Shimshin followed his eyes in wanting to marry the girls of the plishtim. So his eyes were gouged by the plishtim. Like it says in the Pasuk, Vayechzu plishtim vayinakru es enov. They seized him, and the Pelishtim gouged out his eyes. Regarding Avshalom, we find three things. Avshalom nizgar besari, he was vain about his hair. Lefiche chnitla besari, therefore he was hung by his hair. And furthermore, olefiche baal eser pilakshe aviv, and because he cohabited with ten of the pilakshim of his father, lefiche chnitnu by eser lunvies, therefore ten lances, ten spears were thrust into him. Like it says in the Pasuk, Vayisaybu asara anoshim, ten men surrounded him, noisik of those who carried the items of war of Yayav, and they thrust their spears, their lances into him. And furthermore, Ulafisha Ganav Shalish Gnevis, and because he stole three thefts, Lev Aviv, Lev Bezdin, the Lev Yisrael, the heart of his father, the heart of Bezdin, and the heart of Bnei Yisrael, as is explained in the Navi there. Shenemar, as it says, Vayagnev of Sholem, a slave Anshi Yisrael. He brings a pasuk that refers to him to have Sholem stealing the heart of Bnei Yisrael. Lefichach, therefore, Nitku Bay Shleisha Shvatim. Three lances were thrust into him. Shenemar, as it says, Vayikach Shleisha Shvatim, Bechape. He took three lances in his hand, Vayitkoim, Belev of Sholem, and he thrust them into the heart of Sholem.
And the Mishnah continues, And the same is true in regard to good. And the Mishnah presents three examples. Miriam, Miriam, she waited one hour for Moshe when he was placed in the basket as a baby on the water. As it says in the Pasuk, His sister stood from far to see what will happen. And therefore, Bnei Yisrael waited seven days for her in the Midburn desert when she had Saras. As it says in the Pasuk, Miriam. The nation didn't travel until Miriam was brought back into the camp. Another example we find by Moshe, by Yosef. Yosef was in a very high position and he attended to burying his father, Yaakov Avinu. And he, the Mishnah presents a Pasuk, it says, <speaking in Hebrew> that Yosef went up to bury his father and they went with him also chariots and horsemen. And this Pasuk may be teaching us two things. Number one, that Yosef buried his father. And number two, that Yosef was very great, and that's why many others joined him in so. And it says, Mi lanu gadol mi Yosef. Who is greater than Yosef? Then Meishu Rabbeinu himself attended to burying Yosef. So because Yosef, in his high position, buried his father, therefore he merited that Moshe, in his great position, buried him, Yosef. And the Mishnah concludes that we find also Meishu, that Meishu Rabbeinu, he attended to burying Yosef, as a very great person that Moshe Rabbeinu was, like it says, Vayikach Moshe is Atzmai Seisef Imai, Moshe took the bones of Yosef with him, and who is greater than Moshe, that Hashem attended to burying him, so because he, Moshe, as a great person, attended to the burying of Yosef, therefore Hashem attended to burying him, like it says, Vayik Bar Eisef Bagai, and he, Hashem, buried Moshe in the valley, and the Mishnah concludes, Loyal Moshe Bevad Amru, they did not only say this, that Hashem buried him by Moshe alone. Rather, El al kala tzaddikim, but even regarding all the tzaddikim. Shenem as it says in the Pasuk, V'ahalach l'fanecha tzidkecha, and your tzidkecha, your righteousness, will go before you. K'veid Hashem yasfecha. The honor, the glory of Hashem will gather you in. So we see that it's Hashem who gathers in and buries the tzaddikim. One of the things we learned in the Mishnah was that Shimshin, because he sinned with his eyes, therefore his eyes were gouged. Now when we look in the novel, you find three different instances that are going to be mentioned here in our Gemara where Shimshin sinned with his eyes. The first is, it says, Vayered Shimshin Timnasa, Vayar Isha Betimnasa Mibneis Plishtim. So this happened in Timna, and it involved one of Bneis Plishtim. Then we find a little later, it says, two prakim later, it says, Vayelech Shimshin Azasa, Vayar Sham Isha Zaina, Vayavayeleha. So we have a case of in Aza, where Shimshin saw an Isha Zaina. And finally, three psukim later, it says, Vayi Achrechein, Vayav Isha Benachal Serek, Ushma Delila. So we have first in Timna, then in Aza, and then we have Delila. And the teachings now will relate to these different cases. So the Gemara begins and says, Tana Rabbanon, the Rabbanon taught, Shimshin be'ein of Marad. Shimshin rebelled with his eyes. Like it says, and this refers to the first woman, Mibnei's Plishtim, that Shimshin saw in Timna. Vayim Shimshin al-Aviv, Oysa kachli ki hi yashra be'enai. Take her from me, because she is fitting in my eyes. So he followed his eyes. And therefore says, the b'raisa l'fichach nikru plishtim is enav. That's why the plishtim gouged out his eyes. As it says, v'yechzuhu, they held him. V'yinakros enav, they gouged out his eyes. The Gemara challenges this and says, Eni, is this true? That this is a case that Shimshin was following his eyes? But regarding this woman of Timna, this plishti, it's written, v'haksiv v'aviv v'imei layadu kimi ha'shemhi. His father and mother did not know that really this is all part of a plan that Shimshin was doing, implementing for the sake of Hashem in order to infiltrate the Plishtim. And the Gemara answers, yes, it's true that that was his intent. However, ki azal mia, when he went there, however, basa yashru azal, he followed what was good for him. Who he actually chose and picked was based on following his eyes. The Gemara proceeds to present another teaching. Tanya was taught in a brisa. Rebbe Oimer Rebbe says, Tchilas kilkulei ba'aza. The beginning of his corruption was in Gaza. Lefichach na'loka ba'aza. Therefore he was struck in Gaza. Where do we see 
that Tchilas Kilkoi was in Aza, in Gaza, for it's written, Vayelech Shimshin Azasa, Vayar Sham Isha Zaina. He went to Gaza and he saw over there an Isha Zaina. And therefore, Laka be Gaza, as it says, Vayeridu Oisa Yazasa. They took him down to Gaza and there they, they further inflicted pain on him. And the Gemara asks, how can we say that the beginning of his corruption is in Gaza? That was the second woman. Vaksiv Vayerid Shimshin Timnasa, which was earlier on. Vayar Shami, so over there, one of the, a, a plishti woman. And the Gemara answers, Tchilas Kilkule Mia Ba'aza Hoya. The beginning of his corruption was in Gaza because by the first woman, he married her. And therefore, it wasn't as bad as this one. Whereas over here it says, Vayar Sham Isha Zaino Vayavaye Leho. And therefore, it's considered Tchilas Kilkuloi. The Gemara now quotes regarding the third woman, which was Dalila, and the purpose of the quote is then to lead into a teaching. That's why it's in the gray box with the arrow pointing downwards. It says, isha benachal seirik, Says the Gemara Tanya, it was taught in a b'raisa. Rebbe Eimer Rebbe says, Il mole nikra If her name wasn't Dalila, it would be fitting to call her Dalila. Dalila could also be looked at as Dildala, which means to sever. And he says, Dildala is kaychay. She severed his strength, like it says, Vayasar kaychay. Dildala is libay. She severed his heart, like it says in the Pasuk, Vatera dlila ki higidla is kol libay. He said to her everything in his heart. He told her the truth about where his strength comes from. And Dildala is maisav. She severed his actions because as a result of the whole story, it says that the Shechina left Shimshin. He didn't know that Hashem left from upon him. The Gemara now asks a question, an inquiry regarding one of the things mentioned in the Brisa. It says, So the Gemara asks, How did she know? And the Gemara presents two answers. The first answer is from Rav Chanan Amar Rav, and he says, True words are recognizable. And the next one we'll present in the next slide. The Gemara presents a second answer. Abaya Omar, Abaya said, Yoda boy ba isa tzadik the limapik shim shemayim levatola. She knew about this tzadik, Shimshin, that he wouldn't say shim shemayim levatola, Hashem's name in vain. And so since he said, Kaven the Omar, Nazir le kimani, I am a Nazir. For Hashem, Omar, she said, Hashtavade kushtakomer. This time he for sure said the truth, and that's how she knew that he said everything that was on his heart, he told her the truth. In the Brisa, we mentioned the Pasuk, where it says, that Lila saw that Shimshin told her the truth of where he has his strength from. So right before that, it says in the Pasuk, and it was as she nagged him with her words every day, and she pressed him. So says the Gemara, my vatal tseyu. What does it mean vatal tseyu? She pressed him, and the Gemara says, "Amar Rabbi Yitzchok the Bei Rabbi Ami, Rabbi Yitzchok the Bei Rabbi Ami said, Bishaz Gemar Bia Nishmeta Metachtov." At the end of Bia, she slipped away from him, and this caused him tremendous distress. The Gemara will now proceed to present a series of teachings related to Shimshin. It's not so clear how exactly it comes up in our Gemara, in our discussion regarding Shimshin following his eyes. One thing that we do see is that the same author is mentioned, Rabbi Yitzchak, the Bey Rabbi Ami, many times throughout these teachings. So the Gemara begins and quotes from what Shimshin's mother was told by the Malach. And she was told before Shimshin was born, Va'ata hi shamri no val tishti yayin v'sheicher val teichli kol tamei. Be careful, don't drink any wine or aged wine and don't eat anything tummy. So the Gemara asks two questions. My kol tummy, what's kol tummy? What was he referring to? The su and furthermore, whatever kol tummy does refer to, ad hashta dvarim tmeim ka'achla, until now she was eating tummy. 
And the Gemara answers, and we see again the author, Amar Rabbi Yitzchak Debei Rabbi Ami. Rabbi Yitzchak Debei Rabbi Ami said, it refers to Dvar Ma'asurim Benazir, things that are forbidden to a Nazir. And it's explained that what this refers to is, for example, water in which um, grapes were soaked in, which really they're permitted for a Nazir. And she was told to go to that extent, to that degree, and be careful and avoid even that. The Gemara proceeds to present another teaching regarding Shimshin, again with the same author. It says in the Pasuk, This was an incident where Shimshin killed numerous Plishtim with the jawbone of a donkey, and he became very thirsty. And it says, Hashem split open the hollow that was in the jawbone, and water came out. So, Omar Rabbi Yitzchak, the Bey Rabbi Ami, Rabbi Yitzchak, the Bey Rabbi Ami said, who evil le davar tamei? He Shimshin desired something that was tamei, and this refers to his desire that he wanted to marry a daughter of an eved avoid zara, and therefore lefichach nitlu chayev bedavar tamei. Therefore, his life was made dependent on something which was tamei. The Gemara now proceeds to present another teaching regarding Shimshin, and this is on a Pasuk that's said right after his birth. And again, we'll notice that Rabbi Yitzchak, the Bey Rabbi Ami, is one of the one one of the teachings is presented by him. This Pasuk is said right after the Pasuk where Shimshin was born, and it says, Vatochel Ruach Hashem Lufamai, and the spirit of Hashem began coming to him from time to time, Bemachane Don in the camp of Don, Bein Sara Ubein And we're going to look at this Pasuk. So the beginning of the Pasuk, it says, Vatochel Ruach Hashem. And the Ruach of Hashem began to come to him. So Vatochel means it began. So the Gemara presents a teaching on this. Amar Rabbi Chama Rabbi Chanina. Rabbi Chama Rabbi Chanina said, Cholson Vuasa Yishel Yaakov Avinu. The word Vatochel could also be connected to Cholso, which means fulfilled. The Nevu of Yaakov is fulfilled, where it says, Dichsiv Yehi Don Nochash Ali Derech. That Don will be a serpent, a snake, on the road. So, so to Shimshin, he acted in a manner of a snake in the way he dealt with the Plishtim. The next words of the Pasuk say, To come to him from time to time in the, in the camp of Don. So, Omar Rabbi Yitzchak Debei Rabbi Ami, Rabbi Yitzchak Debei Rabbi Ami said, This teaches us that the Shechina would ring before him like a bell and the purpose was in order to escort him. How do we see this? Because it says over here, which means it would come to him from time to time. But we could look at the word and say, it says over here, it says over there regarding the Kayin Gadol, that on his coat there was there was a bell and a pomegranate, and the bells would ring. So we see that the Shechina would ring in front of him like a bell to escort him. And the end of the Pasuk says, Bein Sara u Bein Eshtail between Sara and Eshtail says the Gemara Amar Rabbi Asi Rabbi Asi said Sara ve Eshtail shnei harung delam hayu Sara and Eshtail were two large mountains va Karin Shimshon ut Chanam Zebazet and Shimshon uprooted them and ground them together. The Gemara now proceeds to present two teachings. We included them in one. One is from what the Malach informed Shimshin's mother, which is, V'hu yachal l'ishia es Yisrael, says the Gemara, V'hu yachal l'ishia es Yisrael, Amar Rabbi Chama b'Rabbi Chanina, Rabbi Chama b'Chama b'Rabbi Chanina says, when it says, V'hu yachal l'ishia es Yisrael, it's hinting to something. V'hu yachal means he will begin to save the Yidin, but yachal could also be connected to the word, Huchal, which means to desecrate. Huchal shvosi shalavi melech. It was permitted for Shimshin to fight against the Plishtim because the shvua, the oath of Avi Melech, who was from the, he was the king of the Plishtim, which was that they wouldn't fight one another. 
It was already been desecrated by the Pelishtim themselves. And he quotes the Pasuk where we find the oath. It says, Im tishker li ulanili ulanachti. So this, this Pasuk is alluding to the fact that the oath between Avimelech and the Yidin was already broken by the Pelishtim. And therefore, it was permitted for Shimshin to attack the Pelishtim. And then it says regarding Shimshin, right when he was born, it says, Vayigdal hanar vayavarcheyu Hashem. So the Gemara asks, with what did he bless him? And the Gemara says, Amar of Yehuda Marav, or of Yehuda Marav said, Sheberchei ba'amasei. He blessed him with his ama, and that is amasei kibnei adam. His ama was like that of ordinary people. Vizari kenachol sheitav, but his zera was like a rushing stream, and this fit with his part of the mission and the strategy of Shimshin, which was that he married a number of plishti women.